everyone, it's Joe from Gadget Street Tech, and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Still Series Alias Pro and um, the less expensive Alias, which is this is the USB version. The Alias Pro uh, is an XLR based version that still obviously connects to your PC via USB. Now, there are some advantages to the Pro that help justify the price, um, but basically, the standard Alias is $180, the Alias Pro is $330 and that does include the XLR interface. So I wanna start with some of the basics and uh, I will be comparing to a couple of competitors later. I'm gonna um, also talk to you on the Blue Yeti microphone and the Elgato Wave 3 because I think those are popular microphones in this category and that's basically the content creator, streamer, podcast type thing. Uh, obviously there are professional solutions out there. There's stuff from Shure, Audio-Technica, Rode, et cetera, and they often require a separate XLR interface and that's where uh, SteelSeries was approaching this of like, you know, 330 all in versus a $100 to $200 XLR mic or a $300 XLR mic and then a $200 XLR interface from someone like Focusrite or Motu, for example. So they wanted to give you that kind of performance bundle in a less expensive solution and offer it as an all-in-one unit. Now, I did ask SteelSeries this and I've seen some questions posted online. Uh, currently, there are no plans on selling the XLR microphone separately uh, or the interface separately. It's an all-in-one affair, um, it, again, at the time of this video. Now, I've bumped the mic boom twice already, and I didn't want to cut or edit because I think that's what happens in real life. Now, as far as looks go, they look almost identical. They even come with the same shock mount system, so the actual holder here. This is metal, by the way. This entire arm, that uh, like the claw effect, if you will, that's holding the shock mount is metal as is the screw that tightens it down this part down here is plastic the actual base of the unit and then you have an entire rubber foot that helps um you know reduce noise for one and it keeps it from you know sliding around too much on your desk when i eventually switch mics and talk to you on the standard alias i'll show you the front of the alias pro the front of the alias pro basically is like this just without any controls because it's an xlr interface so there's nothing to change on the mic everything's done through the interface on the standard alias, you get a tap to mute, volume for your headphone or line out, and on the back of the unit, you have your gain and the USB-C and headphone line out of this one. Now, these are both fairly sensitive microphones. They use condenser capsules, which um, I understand at $330, some people are going to prefer a dynamic microphone because they typically have better uh, noise floor and um, they are less sensitive to background noise typically. Now, SteelSeries obviously had a reason to the, for switching a condenser or using it, but they did use a one-inch capsule. That is a huge capsule. Most microphones are significantly smaller than that, and it does affect voicing. So um, the King uh, B2 from Neat, for example, uses a giant uh, capsule. These are only cardioid uh, pickup patterns, which means they're designed to pick you up from the front only. So if I move to the left side, you're going to hear my voice trail off going back to ground or the right side and the voice uh, dips down again. So you always want to make sure it's pointing correctly. Um, a cardioid pattern helps reject background noise. Traditionally, condenser microphones pick up more noise because they're so sensitive and that does impact your gain setting. So I'm actually to carefully lift this. This is the interface on the pro. Now you can see the color is changing based off me talking. It's staying in green because I'm not over uh, boosting my gain. I'm in a safe zone and if I scream into it, it's going to, you can see it for a brief second there, it went yellow. Obviously, if you get red, you're actually clipping out and that's an issue. Now, you do have tap to mute. So, you have this button here uh, is going to mute your line out. So, your actual headphone uh, monitor out on the back. This is to adjust that output. Obviously, that's the gain and then this is to mute my microphone. Now, these buttons are squishy membrane buttons. It's like a soft rubber top. Um, and you know, it's, it, I almost wish it was a little more tactile, but it doesn't move much when you tap to mute the Elgato wave, uh, interface, the wave XLR is you tap the top of the housing to mute and that thing never moves, but it's like touch sensitive. This is a, a physical button. So some people are going to like, uh, one over the other. I do want to show you the back of this though. When you look at the back of the interface, you have one, it includes a really nice XLR cable. That metal uh, terminated XLR cable, that came with the Alias Pro, which is awesome. Then you look at the other side, if I can angle this just right, you can see the USB-C coming out of the bottom. There's actually a second USB-C on this side. 
Now that USB-C port uh, is to hook up to a second computer. So the goal of that is to do simultaneous streaming so you can have a USB-C to your primary machine or even PlayStation and then the second USB connected to um, your stream computer or whatever it may be, thus sharing the resources between the two. Now, my unit may be defective. I haven't seen anyone complain about this issue online. I could not get USB 2 to ever do any audio. It's detected in sonar, it's detected on GG, Windows, my Mac. All of it shows up on USB 2, but I never got a mic signal. So I think I have a defective unit. It's not going to affect anything else in this review, but the goal of that port is for that. I will be uh, contacting Still Serious Support. Um, I think it's a great feature, and I really do want to get it to work because that can come in handy for a lot of uh, specific content creation work. Um, there's also a line output on the back. Again, you can use this as a headphone amplifier. Not the strongest headphone amp, so don't get this with the accept, uh, expectation of powering you know, expensive, harder-to-drive headphones. But it does work, and it's relatively clean, and that gives you the monitor out function as well if you want to hear your microphone or your voice in real time. Now, I'm talking to you on a boom arm. This is the Elgato Low Profile um, boom arm, but SteelSeries does make their own now. It's $100, and then they have a boom arm adapter for $6 separately. I do want to show you how easy it is to adjust this, though. So you have this thumb screw, right? I already showed that earlier. I can loosen that, and now I can change the orientation of my microphone. Because it's so direction sensitive, you want to make sure it's pointing at your mouth. And this screw really does a good job of securing it in place. Because of this bungee cord design with the way the shock mount works, you can angle the microphone slightly. Let me tighten this a little bit more. So you can see I actually have a little bit of wiggle room, if I can stay in focus here, to give you more adjustment. That might give you about an extra inch, inch and a half of height on the microphone if you wanna you know, angle the shock mount up and then tilt it slightly forward. That'll lift it just a little bit. Now, to switch it over to a boom setup, all you have to do is loosen this screw you can see this thing uh, coming out here. It's a really nice screw, so I'm gonna do this on the table to save some time here, because that's gonna be really hard to do up in the air. Now you have the exposed bracket. Look at the quality of the hardware. That's a really nice uh, metal screw in here. So I no longer need this, and in the box is a 5 8 adapter uh, metal bracket. Now this bracket is all metal. Like if you hear this thing, let's do the little sound test. It's solid. It feels really heavy duty. And this is really important for long term because we often adjust our microphones. So um, I'm going to put this bracket on and all I have to do is line up that same screw. I took off the base, push that through. You can kind of hear it click into place with the threads. And look at that. Now I am ready to go. And my standard alias is boom ready. Now both of the microphones have the same front design and that does include the windscreen or pop filter. I don't think these have the best pop filters out there. And at the time of this review, there's no optional pop filter upgrade to help reduce plosives. So it's really important to place the microphone just right so you get that proximity effect and the warmth that these have. But don't so, go so close where you're breathing into it and, and you can hear that kind of blow air through the uh, capsule. So the Wave 3, uh, which I do have, does not have the best uh, pop filter either. However, they sell a pop filter separately and that makes the price pretty comparable to the standard alias. it's I think it ends up being slightly more than the alias once you add the pop filter. But to me, I wouldn't use this without it. It does do a good job. Now you can get universal pop filters for these if they clip on um, to either the shock mount or the post and kind of, it's like a gooseneck style. That will help reduce plosives and then you can get the voicing uh, that the Alias and Alias Pro have. Naturally, they come with the USB-C cord. This is what it looks like unopened and unused. And on the Alias Pro, you get two identical rubber cores. They're long enough to reach a couple machines. Um, and the XLR cable is actually quite long as well. It's not like a four-foot job kind of forcing you to keep it on the desk. I actually have mine going under my desk, around the back, and back to the interface that I was just holding up. So you do have a good extra, I don't know, four to six feet of wiggle room uh, depending on where you put your boom arm. Now I'm going to switch over to Sonar to show you some features that the microphones have on the software level as well. And while I do that, and when I'm talking you through Sonar, we're going to switch to the standard alias so you can hear what my voice sounds like on that one. All right, so after switching to the alias, I did want to show you the status light on this. Uh, you can see that it's like glowing green and flashing up and down based off how loud I'm talking to it. Um, this is a really important gain indicator. If you start seeing it clip into orange or red, then you set your gain too high. So make sure you adjust it. I like that it's right there and it's so easy to see and it's not so bright that it's lighting up your face or anything. So it's not going to affect your stream, 
but it does help make sure that you're not clipping out by giving you a visual indicator. The Pro has it, but on the base, the microphone itself, just so I can show you because I told you I would, looks like this, and there's nothing on the front. So very similar design, just very plain Jane. Now I do want to show you what happens when you mute this mic because it's super cool. I stayed muted. Thank God it showed red and I knew. Uh, that to me is like one of the coolest microphone mute indicators I've ever seen. It's big enough and it like commands your attention. You know that if you're muted or not, there's no accidents. So I'm gonna show you Sonar. I'm just gonna put this back on the boom. All right, so taking a look at Sonar, just to show you on the mixer side of Sonar, I do have my microphone set to the alias. So we're gonna move on to the microphone tab. Now here's where you can customize the way the microphone sounds. This was just me messing around with the default, but that's off right now. And then Steel Series on Sonar does give you presets specifically for their microphones. And then depending on if you put it on the desk or on a boom, there's different EQ profiles for that. And that's because of something called the proximity effect. If it's on your desk, you tend to have different levels of noise rejection needs because of typing. You also typically get less bass from your voice, but also picks up more bass from hitting the desk. So they took away some of that guesswork to make it sound as good as it can within reason. And then of course you can custom tune the sound to your liking. So because I'm using the standard alias, I'm gonna switch over to um, the boom arm in a moment, but I wanna show you one feature first because this is also going to, going to enable uh, noise cancellation effects as well. So let's scroll down. Now you have different background noise rejection uh, features that you can take advantage of in Sonar. Pretty much all of this works whether you have a, a Steel Series microphone or not but to me, this is still an important thing to cover. So you have noise gate, which means um, background noise below a certain threshold will not be passed through. If you set your noise gate too high, then unless you either shout or if you talk normal, it'll actually cut your leading parts of your voice. And at the end of your sentence, when you're done talking, it cuts out pretty aggressively. There's no way to att uh, adjust attacking decay because I think it might be uh, too complicated for some to get right. But if I turn noise gate on, it's gonna help reduce background noise. Before I do that, I talked about the cardioid pickup pattern. I'm gonna type on the SteelSeries Apex Pro Mini so you can hear keyboard, uh, keyboard noise pickup without any enhancements done in software. I know that's picking it up. I can see it clear as day. So then the next step, you can enable noise reduction and there's two different types. Background noise reduction is more for like fan noise, a vacuum cleaner, something that's more of a drone and long-winded effect. Impact noise is like the keyboard press or clicks. So you can choose and individually balance both and they both have their own negative impacts on your voice. So if I enable impact, you can hear my voice sounds weird. It's almost like it's pulling out little bits and pieces of my voice, like a micro chunk was taken out of my voice and that's with impact set to high. So I'm gonna type on it real quick though so you can hear the difference. So it does get rid of some, but to me, not enough to justify using it this level because of what it does to my voice. So if I set it to 50, it's going to have uh, less of a negative effect on my voice and I can type. But I'm still picking up more background noise, right? You can hear the keyboard. So if I go to background, and this is the drone effect of the computer, if you will, it should get rid of any kind of a hiss or issue there. Looks quiet. So if I slide uh, this up, now you're going to hear more of the effect it has on my voice, and this has a different kind of negative effect. If you enable both, you're going to have some serious issues. Um, it does not sound natural with this enabled the way it is right now, but I just wanted to show you what that sounded like. All right, so my favorite feature for the microphone uh, noise enhancements is the ClearCast AI noise cancellation because this does the best job of getting rid of as much background noise as possible, but your voice still sounds a lot more natural, a lot closer to how it should. So even if I max this out, you can hear um, there is a slight change in my voice, but not as much as the other two did, like not even close. But if I type while this is active, nothing is coming through when I type. You can hear a little bit of the typing while I'm speaking, but other than that, it's pretty quiet. And then I can take it to the next step if I go to noise gate and set it to either, uh, minus 40 has been my preference. Um, if it's too aggressive or you're too soft-spoken, soft throw the threshold down a little bit, like make it so it's negative 
I don't know, 45 or 50. And if you're a very loud person and you don't care about the background noise, you can increase the noise gate further. Just keep in mind, you can't talk quietly. So I have my noise gate basically set to 40 now. There we go. And to me, this sounds great. Now, when I enable um, the ClearCast AI noise cancellation, I can't use noise reduction anymore because ClearCast is taking care of it. Now, if you do change your voice volume a lot, you have the compressor. This compressor is set to 50 or 0.5 to me still sounds good. And what it's going to do is when I'm talking more softly, it's going to boost my voice a little bit. And when I speak very loudly, it helps reduce it a little bit. The higher your compressor, the more it compresses the volume range from your minimum to your loudest volume. You don't want to do it too much because it might not sound as natural, but this does help a little bit with stream quality. If you're really quiet during a suspenseful part of a game and then you yell because something scared you or you got excited, um, this is going to help tone that down a little bit so the audio is not as jarring for your listeners. So I'm going to go into the profile now, and that's going to change my ClearCast AI and noise cancellation settings. So let's click on alias boom arm. And you can see this kind of curve is designed to help make my voice sound even warmer. There's a little bit of a cut in the higher frequency, but this is a key thing to point out, uh, reducing the bass, because your voice isn't going down to 20 or 30 hertz. And all that's going to do is help you get rid of some of the impact from hitting the boom arm. So that helps. Now the EQ is on, and then this particular profile, they have ClearCast set to, if I can slide it 60, and then uh, noise gate at minus 40.5, and then the compressor set to 0.30. So it's a little bit less aggressive than what I was doing with the compressor. Um, I think overall it sounds great. Now if I switch to desk stand, it's gonna be a very different sound. And you see how much more bass there is? That's because of something called the proximity effect. So I'm gonna switch back real quick. The proximity effect is when you're closer to a microphone capsule, especially a one inch capsule like this, it's going to capture more warmth. Your voice is going to sound uh, larger in scale, less thin and like a tin can, if you will. Um, when your microphone is sitting on the desk, you lose that proximity effect unless you want to look like the hunchback of Notre Dame. So what they do is that custom EQ is greatly boosting that mid bass and warmth that your voice is losing from not being close to make it sound closer to the proximity effect. And I also mentioned the noise reduction. So if you go in here, minus uh, 40, and then this was set to 60. If I go to the desk stand, now this is set to 60, noise gates off and compressor is a little bit higher. That's set to 0.4. So they have different sound um, properties, if you will, again, to make the microphone perform better. So let's go back to default. I'm gonna leave all of this off. Let's turn everything off here because we'll eventually switch mics and I don't want you to hear the same type of filtering logic applied uh, to the competitor's mic. So um, yeah, and then once I'm done with that, we'll go back to Sonar because I wanna show you what enabling streamer mode does to the pro interface. All right, now I'm talking on the Elgato Wave 3, which does have different voicing. It's voiced a little bit more forward or um, bright in the 2000 Hertz region. So my voice sounds just a little bit more harsh uh, or shouty than the Steel Series, which with the larger capsule, has more warmth and smoothness to it. So this is the difference in sound um, between the two, but this does have better plosives rejection. So if I got my voice uh, or my mouth very close to the Wave 3 and I um, have hard P's, that pop filter, which again is a $30 optional upgrade, to me does a better job than the current pop filter situation on the alias. So this is what the Wave 3 sounds like. So now I'm talking to you on the Blue Yeti microphone, which is a very popular mic. This thing picks up everything, it's very sensitive. Um, and it sounds good. The clarity of the Yeti has always been great. The issue I've had with the Yeti is the dynamic range is poor. You have a very narrow operating window of voice volume. And if you get too loud, it's very easy to clip. And if you're too soft, well, if you boost gain, it's gonna pick up a lot of background. There is a selectable pickup pattern feature on the back to decide how much noise rejection it has. I have it set to cardioid to match the other products here, but if I turn the microphone, this is the difference of looking at it on the, or talking to it on the left, talking it on the right hand side above. It still picks up my voice, but it's obviously more sensitive um, using it when you're directly in front of it. So again, I think I even just clipped in this video um, from what I'm seeing on my line uh, meter. There's no indicator on the mic. I have to look at my software, but it's an old mic. It sounded great at its time, but the poor noise handling and dynamic range I think makes it tougher to compete with these other microphones these days. All right, so now I'm talking to you on the Alias Pro microphone again, and you can hear the voice difference uh, as far as my warmth goes. 
Now I'm going to enable that feature I was talking about with the custom EQ. So let's go to Alias Pro Boom Arm. I'll benefit from some of the noise rejection and the voicing that is better suited according to Steel Series. And I wanna show you a couple cool features. So if you look at the top of Sonar, there's a toggle switch that says streamer mode. So I'm going to enable it, which will temporarily cut my sound. And now you can see a different looking interface. And that's because you can route audio to OBS or your streaming platform of choice separately from what you hear on your own headphone or headset, IM, whatever you're using. So this gives you a little bit extra flexibility. Now, not I enabled this for two reasons. One, just to show you that this feature exists because this app is pretty amazing. You can drag and drop applications to different audio sources and get really fine control over individual volume. However, enabling streamer mode also gives you an extra feature on the pro interface. So if I go to engine and I have my devices listed here, I wanna show you two things. One is Prism. This is the light control feature. And if you enable Prism on all compatible devices, this is where you can customize it. So I have the SteelSeries Arena 7 here. My alias USB, this is one device. This is the uh, less expensive USB version. And then here's the interface for my alias Pro. There's my Apex Pro Mini. Um, you can rearrange this using this tool, the Move tool, to better mimic how it's set up on your desk. So if this was backwards, I can just drag and drop. The reason why this is important is because if I go to active on the layer and then click effects and reflect, that means it's reading the color output of my primary display to do dynamic RGB lighting based off what's happening. So if you're in a racing game and the right side is green trees and the left side is a red barrier, then the left side's gonna be red and the right side's going to be green. And this does react fairly quickly. It's about a half second behind or so, maybe a second, but it is a really cool feature. Of course, you can do the uh, standard presets that a lot of people are accustomed to or individually customized settings. You can even select and apply certain uh, color schemes to different zones. So the reason why I wanted to show you this though is if I go back to gear, I click on Alias Pro, slide this over. I can customize the RGB lighting, of course, that's to be expected. Ambient light LED is being controlled by Prism right now, so I can't change that. But you can make the mute button uh, glow a different color, nice add. Now, but if you go to audio, this is your mic side tone. This is what uh, is allowing you to hear your own voice, which is in real time and it sounds excellent, which is to be expected from an XLR interface. The bindings though is the extra feature that only shows up if streamer mode is enabled in Sonar. And what that allows you to do is take the second volume wheel that was on the interface I showed you earlier and reassign it. So the default is headphone out and mute headphone out. But if you want it to be something different, you can have it change line out, master volume, game, chat, media, aux, your mic, all of this can be separately managed and you're controlling volume settings for different devices. So if you have, um, you could, let's say you're playing music from your favorite streaming software to OBS because you want your listeners to hear some music in the background. Well, you can reassign that knob to be your music volume knob for just the stream allowing you to turn it up when a good song comes on or when you're like, be right back. And then when you return, you can turn it back down or adjust your game's chat voice so the stream can better hear your teammates making fun of each other, you know, whatever it may be. So that's a really cool feature. I, I wish, to me, the icing on the cake would have been if they had a, a third wheel that had game to chat on it and just have a physical interface for all three. Obviously, they have the Nova Pro series to do that, but this would have been a cool add on the microphone side. Uh, it's just a cool little thing that I don't think was fully advertised, but it does give you a lot more versatility on the streaming side. So that about wraps up the review. And um, I hope this helped you understand more about the Alias uh, Pro and the standard Alias. I think the standard Alias at 180 is the best value of the two because it sounds so good for the price. The reason why you would consider the Pro is one, if you need those streamer features I just showed you, or if you want to take advantage of the benefits that XLR microphones give you. In this particular case, an XLR microphone is going to give you a wider dynamic range, which means when your stream is very quiet and you're soft spoken or not speaking, XLR should have less hiss. And then if you're louder, this microphone will have a higher tolerance of volume before you have a clipping issue. Now this is a condenser mic. It is very sensitive and I have my gain set to only about 25 or 30% because at 50% talking the way I'm talking now does cause the microphone to clip. 
So if you're really soft spoken, I can say with certainty this uh, the pro interface gives you a lot more sensitivity. It has a much stronger preamp. So if it's not close to you and you want to pick up as much noise as you can, the pro is going to do a much better job. The tougher sell though is the pro pricing at $300 or $330 because Elgato has their Wave XLR and their XLR microphone that they sell when bundled together is under $300 right now. So it's a little bit cheaper and Elgato gives you something called VSTs, which um, I use on OBS. It's I use a, um, the FabFilter Pro DSer because I have a strong S. And VSTs are nice because it's like a plugin that fixes your audio in real time. Sonar is excellent. Sonar gives you all those noise rejection features, um, the parametric EQ, which no other uh, gaming company is giving you um, at this level. So there's amazing things on it. If you need to use a VST for stream, integrate the VST into your OBS platform or something like that. However, your friends in game chat won't hear the benefits of the VST plugins that you add simply because it's not running natively in Sonar. Use a third-party program if you want your friends to hear that. There are options out there, but again, I'm just you know being very clear on how this works. On Elgato's Wave, you can uh, add the VST into the Wave software, and it's just embedded into all the sound output it makes. So it can simplify it, but the Wavelink software is a lot less feature-rich than what Sonar is in other areas. So um, I really like these microphones. I love the warmth. Um, I love the tonality, and, and it's a great balance of being clear but working well with my voice. And this may sound dumb, but usually you attribute heavy microphones with more quality, and that's correct to an extent. Um, it just typically works that higher end microphones use more metal, so they weigh more. However, I can tell you as a content creator in dealing with moving gear around a lot and things like this low profile arm, which does not have a spring mechanism because I can't stand seeing all this extra stuff sticking out. Heavy microphones really struggle with certain boom arms and equipment. These microphones are very light considering how good they sound. So the uh, power to rate ratio, weight ratio for your car people out there. Basically, your audible performance per gram is really nice. I know that's a dumb thing to say, but my boom arm stays in place all the time now. And being able to dial in the placement is another benefit that I got uh, from this. So it's not a perfect home run, but I think they uh, have a very, very competitive mic in both price ranges. Again, just knowing what they can and cannot do. So I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did, because I'd love to see you at the next one. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.